So Blessman will come on one of Oklahoma State's top return players. He led the Big 12 in blocks last year and also broke the field goal percentage record last season, shooting at 64.2%. That's Caleb Boone. How you doing, man? Doing great, my guy. How you been? Can't complain. We'll kind of walk us through this because this has been an up and down season. Obviously, you guys just got done with the whole COVID pandemic year. You guys were able to go to the NCAA tournament overall, pretty solid season. You obviously broke out, especially the second half of the year, but now it's off season. So it's kind of takes to see how you're feeling right now. Oh, uh, I mean, for me personally, the season, it was, it was difficult. Like nothing was really normal. You know, my off season wasn't normal. My like changes the, the whole world of how of COVID. So then when I did that, everything just, you know, went, went flow. Like I did my first year. And that's something that's special because obviously this team was a super deep team. Personally, I had you guys going a lot further. I thought you guys obviously had all the pieces, but obviously once again, it's a pandemic. And for you guys being a young team, like we saw so many of these other programs that had a loaded amount of freshmen and sophomore struggle, but you guys were able to go out there and clearly still made a tournament team. You still were a tournament, a little bit of a tournament run. How were you guys able to do that this year? Uh, the honestly, the culture with mm -hmm. like Coach, um, Coach Boyden, um, Eric Shuttlewin when he was still here, like Bradley, Brad, um, B Rad, mm -hmm. like all the coaches really. I can't just single with somebody out because, like, they even though we're young, we were young and we really didn't have that many juniors. We had Ice and and D Mitchell, mm -hmm. but like with their leadership and then with me, Avery, Key. And Chris and everybody that was, that was here last year that seen what the Big 12 was like, we knew, like, in certain situations how, like, how we had to be, how we had to stick together. So, like, uh, like having that maturity and, like, the experience, because, like, a lot of us sophomores played a lot last year, mm -hmm. um, have that experience, but then also have the coaching. It, that's what really, like, pushed us to those big wins that helped us get into the tournament. Absolutely. We're going to get back into Oklahoma State stuff in a little bit, but I really want to touch up on overall your career, your journey to get to this point. So let's head all the way back. You've obviously been home pretty much your whole life. So you grow up there in Tulsa, Oklahoma. What was it like growing up out there? Uh, growing up in Tulsa, Oklahoma, it was like where I grew up from, the Ninny North. It was, it was tough. It was like, it was not a spot most people would want to live and go to, mm -hmm. but it, it was hard, but that, like certain, like certain things, like in your life, you gotta like embrace and it makes you better as a person. So that made me better. And then growing up, getting in high school, went to Memorial. I mean, everything was just it brought basketball more like more joy to my life. And it, it made me more realize that okay, I can use this this sport to better like help my family and better my better my life. So I'm gonna have to come back to this, like come back to this lifestyle when it's all said and done. And you have an even a more unique scenario than a lot of guys do, and that's that you have a brother, a twin brother, who obviously we know is also your teammate in college, who's a teammate in high school, has always been together. So that's a unique thing. Like, not many guys get to be pushed by someone their same age, playing the same sport. So how was that? It's like growing up with Keelan. I um, mean, growing up with Keelan was it, – it, <laughs> it's like having, like – like, anybody that has, like, not even a twin, like a brother or sister, at times it gets annoying. Mm -hmm. you know? Like that, but I mean, Keelan, Keelan, like most people don't know this. Keelan really made me want to play basketball because, mm. because um, when we was in middle school, it was me, Keelan, and my one of my friends back in the day. His one of my friends back in the day. We we saw their time basketball trials, and then we all threw was like, let's go try it out for it. And like at the time, I had no motivation to really like pursue anything like if I thought it was fun and then after that just stopped but then after that I saw Keelan do it and like he used to play at this this park by my house out north and like he was like at night we would, me and my mom and my dad we would go see Keelan play and I was just sitting on the bench and I got like on the silence I got bored so then I told my mom I said mom I want to I want to play and then she was like, it's too late. The season is like already started. So I was blessed to play like the last game of the season with him because like it was just like a little league. And then he started to play on the AAU team. And I told the coach, say, hey, look, I want to I want to play AAU. And I really didn't play much until one tournament where like 
we was getting we was getting blown out. So the coach put me in, and I had like three blocks and like two layups, and like probably like two rebounds. And then that's what really set it off. And then me and my brother just always had this connection. Like, hey man, like let's let's just as long as you do it, I'm gonna do it with you because it. Really, I did it until it got me out of a lot of things I didn't want to do. Like, I didn't have to do homework at night. <laughs> and yeah, So that's why I started doing it. And it was because of Keelan. Mm-hmm. So have you always had the height of there? Like, were you guys always close and high? Or did you always kind of have a couple inches on him when you guys were growing up? At some point, like, when we was, like, in middle school, okay, we was always, like, like, I was always, like, probably, like, a half, half, half an inch taller than Keelan. Mm-hmm. And, like, when we got into high school, like, from mid, mid, like late middle school, I just shot up and I just got taller. But I always told my dad, I think it's because I always told my dad, I said, one day I'm going to be taller than you. And my goal is taller than you. Because my dad was 6'6, six, six, my dad is 6'6 six, six and a half. This when I was like, probably like 5'3, five, 5'4, five, I mean, 6'3, six, 6'4. Six, six, mm-hmm. And when I got up to 6'5, I was like, oh, Sam, hold on, wait a minute. Like, <laughs> this this is different. <laughs> and then I was like, then I realized, I said, I started leaving Keelan behind in the height. And I was like, you, you're so much taller than your brother. And then Keelan shot up and got, like, got back to, like, that an inch and a half shorter than me, half an inch. So then that's when we was just like, okay, bet, like, yeah, this this height thing is really it. So I was been, like, an inch and a half, an inch taller than Keelan. And that's the unique thing about you, too, because we see with honestly a lot of twins, they do typically have a little bit of height difference. But especially when you're talking about basketball, like you guys could truly form like that dynamic duo. You guys could be that different guys because he's more of the guard, small four type of personality. You're more of the power forward center kind of guy. So how have you guys been able to form that dynamic duo over time together on the court? I was just chemistry and like knowing how he plays. Like in high school, I used to hate Keelan for this, but like Keelan, I knew like, like Keelan was that that player he did not have to work on his game at all like ever but he'll come in the gym and he'll shoot the ball like crazy and like he'll just go score like it's nothing and all that and all that kind of things but the more we started playing playing the sport more the more we fell in love with it me and Kim was like hey man look I, I got this area down here you you got I got you down here if you got me out there. And Keelan said, I'd rather play on the perimeter than the post. I said, I'd rather play the post than the perimeter. He said, okay. And then, like, the connection throughout the years, it, it's just been – it's just been been in the gym together, practicing with each other, and just playing on so many teams with each other. And then that's really it. That's why, like, in high school, my dad used, my dad used to call me and him out on this a lot. Mm-hmm. There would be, like, every game where, like, me and Keelan would, like, look at each each other and be like, all right, Keith, you got it. Or he'd be like, all right, Caleb, you got it. You go, like, you go off, just go do you. I'm getting double team. You go do you. And it was just like that every time. That's why, like, me and him will always compete to see who will always have, like, the most points or rebounds during, like, during the games. He never competed with me on the blocks, though, because he knew I had that in high school, though. The blocks, I, I always had him on that. Now, I know there's always that difference kind of relationship, even with, like, just brothers on the court, even brothers and sisters. Like, you just have a different bond than you can possibly create with any other type of player out there. So, like, how unique is that? Like, when you were on the court together with him, like, what's that extra feeling that you kind of have with him? I just know what he's going to do. I know what his, like, I know, like, he said, like, if I get the ball on the post and I see Keelan on the opposite side, I know he knows I'm going to look at him first. And if he doesn't get it, and he's gonna like, I'm gonna front for the cut out. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna hit him with that, get the hook shot. I know Keelan's a really good offensive rebounder to the point he's gonna go get it. And like he knows me, I know. And the one thing I hate about Keelan because he used to do this a lot. I know when he goes up for a layup, I have to wait <laughs> to make sure the ball hits the rim because Keelan, Keelan would do this. He'll go up for a layup, and the last second he'll just dish it to me. And like you don't know how many times in high school we, I had a turnover because of that. And it made me so mad. So, like, the connection has grown so much since high school. Uh, obviously, my freshman year, me and him had a connection. But then this year, we really embraced it because me and him just knows how knows how we play. So now, i got to give you a question kind of putting you on the spot, though. If you're going to rank the best brother duos out there, obviously, we got a ton of them out there. Between college guys, we saw Mobley brothers last year. Obviously, Morris twins have been back there for a long time. Lopez brothers, like, there's a lot of them out there. 
But who's your top three all time brother duos or trios? Uh, I didn't really watch the Morris brothers when mm-hmm. they were in college. I didn't watch them. Off, I saw the Harrison twins. They they were they were they were lethal. I heard, mm-hmm. and uh, the Mobley brothers were were cold. They 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 were cold. I would say if I had to choose, it would go the the Morris brothers, the Harrison brothers, and then I'll say the I'll say Mobley brothers. The Mobley brothers were were cold. I feel like I didn't I didn't I was too busy <laughs> with my season, but like. I, I think they were, they, they were a tough duo together. That was what two six eleven seven foot giants out there. <laughs> that that one that one was tough. Absolutely. Well, let's kind of go through you as a player too now, because you always guys both go to more high and you guys create a great legacy out there. But it wasn't like a day one. You guys went out there and dominated. That first year, you guys kind of learned from a couple of different guys. Kind of just learned the ropes of high school basketball. So, kind of take us to that freshman year a little bit. Like, what was that first year at Memorial like? It was it was interesting. Like a lot of people, a lot of people knew who me and my brother were because we came from Union, and like I were like six 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 five freshman. So it was like, oh yeah, like we got to get him and stuff like that. But when we went to Memorial, my coach told like the first thing my coach said, he said, "I'm not gonna hand you nothing. You have to everything. You have to beat out some people." and it's just it is what it is. If you want to stay here after that, fine, cool, let's get to work. If not, hey, I'll see you in the in the long run. But hope we give you hope like have the best careers that y'all got. Mm-hmm. So, instead of bumpy, we're gonna stay here at Memorial. And like the first <laughs> I remember the first workout I had with my high school coach in seventh hour practice, he told like Keelan, something happened. And my bro- and he yelled he yelled at my brother at Key and he said I will run you he said I will run your ass back to Union <laughs> <laughs> and like my brother has really like a nonchalant attitude so like when a coach yelled at him it doesn't really face him so then this is what he did he looked at me <laughs> and I looked at him and me and him knows I took in my mind I was like if you leave on you know I'm leaving with you. <laughs> Like, like I, I was I was prepared and then he just got back online. I said, okay, bet we we just gonna do this. My freshman really experience, I had I had a lot of great uh players ahead of me. Kalen Charles, Isaiah Thomas, he plays football at OU. Mm-hmm. Caleb Nero, Kobe Rose. I had a bunch of people that was just there that were great like leaders and like just knew what to do. They explained they weren't they were great teammates. So my freshman, I just really learned. I was like, okay, bet. Let me learn from these guys. And then my sophomore year, I still played with some of them because they were like juniors at the time my freshman year. And played with them again my um their their senior year, my sophomore year. And then I was like, okay, bet. Like then we got to the playoffs, the the fun, the championship again, and we won that. So I was like, okay, bet. Like okay, bet. I'm I think I'm ready to lead. And then. My dad talks to my dad. My dad does this every time. And when I'm in a position where, like, you know, like, I'm I'm looked at as, like, okay, you got to be this. He was mm-hmm. like, every time I need you, you got to – you had the two two years to learn it, be be what Coach Austin needs you to be. Now he needs you to be that that person to for people to rely on. So, then I was like, okay, bet. I, I took the knowledge. I'm, I think I'm ready. I'm ready for it. So, then junior year – I still had a great group of guys as seniors to like lead, help lead, lead the team. Then mm-hmm. my senior around, and I was like, I can't point no fingers. It's, it's me and Key, and then my other teammates. So I was ready for that 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 captain, that leadership role, that senior role, mm-hmm. and then I was blessed to win my senior. Year. Now, when you talk about going to Memorial originally, like what led that decision? Like, why was that the school you chose? Um, honestly, because I used to play, I would play some AAU games with, I used to be on this AAU team called Christ First, Mm -hmm. and one of the assistant coaches, or one of the coaches was, I had his sons there, so then he texted me, he texted my dad, he was like, hey, like, I heard y'all looking for a school to go to, because we was going through some things at the time, and he was like, hey, y'all try Memorial, and at the time, they had that label as old memorials, like ghetto, they're like they're like the like equivalent to central stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And 
we was like, nah, then he was like, let's go, let's go see what it's like. I was like, okay, better. So we went and like we were rolling the school there for like a week. My dad said, I'll give you on like one week or a week and a half to see if I like it. If I like it, we'll stay here. If not, we'll go back, we'll go to another school. Mm-hmm. So now there, but then my mom I was like, bro, I'm tired of changing schools. It's like I never really found like a school that I could just, you know, just call like my home from the jump. So then like that week, that end of the week came. And my dad was like, so what y'all want to do? I said, I want to stay here. He said, why? I said, I'm tired of changing schools, man. Like, I've been doing that since I was a kid. Can I, can I just stay? Can we just stay here? And he was like, Key, do you want to? Key was trying to go back to Union. But I was like, no. Nah. But he was like, he said, come on. I said, no, nah, bro. I, I want to stay here. And Key took one for the team. And we he ended up saying no more. Now, if I would have told you at that point in time that you're eventually going to leave high school as one of these top 100 ranked players, you're going to have a ton of offers all over the country, you're going to go to Oklahoma State, and eventually you're going to become a guy that even has your name on mock drafts and a potential NBA prospect now. Like, could you have seen that in your future heading into freshman year? No, no. I, me and Keelan were not, we were like so. We thought of basketball so little. We didn't even know like they could get scholarships in basketball. <laughs> like, we we didn't. We just thought, okay, man, like we go pick out a college we want to go to. We try for the team. If we do that, we we go to that school. We play on a basketball team until one day a coach came up in there. He was like, "Hey, I want to offer both of y'all." And we was like, "What does that mean?" He said, "We want to give you a scholarship to come to our school play basketball." He's and we was just like, "That's how that's how we really thought basketball worked <laughs> in, in college." For a long time so then then after that and then the more we started like playing basketball the more we got better the more notice the, like the more like publicity we got mm-hmm. and then more coaches called and stuff like that we was like okay but we can like we could really like do something with this and i he probably said, i didn't even think i was that good in 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 high school until like probably my senior year and then my senior year, i was like i gotta let, i gotta show that um the um D1 big sub material. So that's that's how it was. We're gonna get into this a little bit later, but like I said, obviously now you are guys have your name thrown around mock drafts for future classes now. But like when did you start feeling like this was something you could actually be like when did you start feeling like you know you might actually be able to make a career out of the sport now if you truly are one of those better players every time you step on that court. My after my sophomore year, <laughs> like literally after we won it and like after we went, I played a uh, summer ball with PWP my last two years at AAU. That's when I was like, and I saw all the colleges and stuff like that. Cause I remember my first tournament with PWP, we went to New York and we was on the court. We was um, um, waiting to play. And there was a clock up, like there was like these, these staircase, but there was a clock up there. Mm-hmm. And the clock, went zero and I just saw like hundreds of college coaches coming down the stairs. I'm like, oh snap this. And like they're just all choosing, like they're all walking, choosing what court they want to um go on and stuff like that. I'm like, oh snap like this is what this is like. Hold on, I could travel the world for free. Like get out of um Tulsa. I just about said, yeah, no, this this is something I need to take serious. And then, like, uh, after that summer, I just – I got serious. I talked to my high school coach. We got into the gym a lot. He was like, if you want to do this, you got to put in this amount of work. So I was like, okay, bet. Let's do it. I got in the gym when he didn't tell me. He told me the gym was open. Me was there. He told my dad, hey, I, like, this is going on. If the twins should – if they want to, like, get better, they should be here around this time. My dad told us we was there around that time, so it was it was it was something that we was like, okay, well, we, we gotta take this serious. We gotta we just gotta do it and don't ask questions. Now the jump you had between your sophomore and junior year is drastic for both you and Key. Obviously, you went from four points a game to seventeen. You went from about five rebounds to all of a sudden thirteen, and every single number really jumped. And like you said, it you had a lot bigger opportunity. But would you personally say like you could have done that your sophomore year if the opportunity was there? Was that truly just you got that much better in the year between your sophomore and junior season? I say it was the growth because honestly, I would say it was this my sophomore summer playing on a circuit with PWP because as like not everybody in Oklahoma, it's six six 
like strong at, at my age at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I was like very little. So then like on the circuit, I saw like a different phys physicality from different people. I was big, slow, big. I see a strong, fast, big. I just saw so much other things. So then my junior year, it was like, okay, bet like I I know what I have to play at this level. I can't get so I like, I'll say like that my sophomore year and my that sophomore summer was needed. Cause I don't think because I had just I was soft in high school. So so I had to like that soft mindset and that's what it was really. Yeah, no, I'm not I'm not gonna play at this level like this. So when you say you kind of got that that dog mentality in your that that ability to really play a great defensive game because I know we all know the defenders that you even bring that out a little bit more this year too on defense but you obviously have that dog mentality like you're going after it on defense like when did that start really coming into you? My junior year, it was it was my junior year when I realized I was a really good shot blocker. And I was like, okay, bet like I can I can really do this. So like my dad would always challenge me. He was saying I don't. He'll challenge me say, I don't think you get five blocks tonight. So I'd be like, okay, bet. So I went out and I would get seven, eight. <laughs> and challenge me with the seven to I go get nine, ten. And there was a time I got a triple double with blocks and I didn't even realize it until my coach told me the next day. <laughs> and I was like, I said, okay, bet. Like that's just I gotta be an intimidated in the paint. So you get a state championship, your sophomore, junior, and your senior season. Which one of those three meant the most to you? My senior year. My hands down, my senior year. My sophomore year, I would say my sophomore year is the second because I, like, the way I seen, I was there on the team when we lost by that game with uh, winning put back. Mm -hmm. And I thought I hurt all my teammates' eyes and stuff like that. And, like, the dog and the mentality that we all thought of, like, literally after the sudden then. Yeah, but my senior year, it was crazy because, like, I almost got blown out in the semis my year. So, like, I was just like, I said, I just got to leave it out here on the court. And I had my brother to to my side, I had a teammate, man, and just being, like, that captain, that leader to, like, do it and lead that team, it, it, was, it was just a great feeling when, like, you are that guy and you have to, like, like, drive it, like, basically, like, drive the car to the destination and stuff like that. And you had to put up with all the, like, the distractions and, like, being a person to say, like, okay, like, we're only going to go as far as, like, how you want to take us. So, that's – and that, I love that challenge. So I would say my senior year was the best one. Now, at the same time, you're also going through a recruiting process, too, which we also know ended up going to Oklahoma State for you and your brother. Was that like a thing that go heading into that? Did you guys both know that no matter where it was going to be, you guys were going to be a package deal? Yeah, yeah, that that was that was the thing because my my mom and dad was always told us they said, "Yeah, y'all not splitting up until y'all go pro," mm -hmm. and like, okay, bet like bump it. Me and Keelan at first was like, "No, nah, I don't want to go to college together, man. I want to go see the world myself." Then my dad made a good point. He said, "Why would you want to go?" away from somebody when they help you play better like y'all play better together than I do separately so like that makes no sense and then throughout the year the more we played the more we fell in love with it the more we realized oh like yeah like this this is something that, that's gonna embrace a lot so then like we was like okay bet bump it and then a lot of people know we came up here for an unofficial visit and we just loved it. We loved it. We came down here. We came down here when they beat Trey, the OU and Trey Young. Mm -hmm. That team that we came down here when they swept Kansas. And probably one of my greatest moments, like greatest moments I've seen here, is either it's hot this. My son Mitchell Solomon died for a loose ball. You know, with like when it was him and Trey Young. Or uh, when I saw the court storm the floor when they saw Kansas, I was like, man, I got to be a part of this atmosphere. I, I said, I got to. So then me and Kayla went home. It was like, hey, dad, man. My dad, because my dad always told me, he said, y'all keep y'all recruitment open, make sure y'all see all options before y'all make a decision. But then me and Kayla was like, yeah, dad, I'm not going to lie to you, man. <laughs> we, we, this is a spot. He said, for real? 
I said, yeah. He said, why would, like, what did you like about it so much? I said, I mean, the, the sports, like the fans love every sport. I don't care what sport it is. They, they treat every sport the same, but they, they love them equal. Mm-hmm. I said, but the coach, man, I said, the coach reminds me of, like the way y'all are straightforward when it comes to the hoops and like just the life aspect of everything. I said, it reminds me of you and Coach Allison. So I said, like, why go for another coach that's going to just tell me, like, tell me a story when this guy right here basically told me everything Coach Allison then told me. And then you didn't tell me when I started playing this sport, the, this basketball. He was like, okay, hey, do that. So then we called up all the other coaches, told them, hey, look, we appreciate the, the recruitment, the, like the offer and stuff like that. But we're going to go to Oklahoma State and play together. And we made sure we signed up. Uh, we signed those papers before my, my senior year. Mm-hmm. And the rest is history. So was there ever a school that you were really close to? I know Tulsa was also heavily in the mix, I believe. But I know you had offers from Oklahoma. You had offers from Wichita State, Iowa. Houston, like, I'm sure there's also were different schools to offer you individually. Also, I offered Key individually. Like, were, what other schools were heavily in the mix? Like, did you like another school? Were you close to ever going anywhere else? Or was Oklahoma State just so far above everyone else? Like, at the time, we was just so excited that we was getting out of the colleges. We was like, oh, okay, bet. Like, uh, I, I like this. Like, TU was up there because, like, other than OSU, they showed us, like, they showed us the love. And, like, so they showed us, like, okay, we really want the mirror. We want to make them, like – like them to come here and everything like that. But other than that, it was just my, I said, oh, it's you, man. Like, I just love it, man, that and my family can come watch the game, stuff like that. So that's what it was. So has being home always been a big thing for you? Like, have you always wanted to stay home? Clearly, that's where you're born, you're raised, you play high school there, you're at college now. Like, have you always wanted to keep it home? Was that appealing to you guys at all? Honestly, me and Keaton wanted to get out of Tulsa because we was like, man, we've been here our whole lives. We want to go see something new. But then the more you realize, the more and the more we went through stuff in our lives, like personal and stuff like that, we was like, no, nah, I, I want to make it easier for mom, mom, dad, my grandma mm-hmm. to go up there and watch us play. And then you know, it was like, yeah, we got to we got to find somewhere where grandma can like really it was my grandma. It was like, yeah, I got to find some place for my grandma to come up here and like see us play for the one time. Mm-hmm. At, it was still water. My grandma first went out. She's like, she said, "Why still water?" I was like, "Grandma, we love it down there." She said, "Okay," because my mom went there when she was in college. Mm-hmm. So now, obviously, it's kind of jumping ahead once again. But as I said, you are obviously thrown around mock drafts. So if the time does come and the Thunder obviously are on the board and they have a chance of selecting you, and that's where you could go, how much pride would that be behind you? Like being able to go represent, stay home once again. Like, what would go through your mind? I would, I would love that. If I, if I ever got drafted to Thunder or to play for the Thunder, man, I would, that, that would, that would be an amazing feeling. That would, that would bring so much joy to my heart. I got so much friends, so much family down here, and just for them to see me, literally, either like an hour and a half, two hours away, to come see me play in the NBA, that would, that would just bring so much joy and happiness to my heart. But where I could play it, it would bring bring me this and joy to my heart. Absolutely, man. Well, there's something else that's unique about you, and that's that winning mentality. Because you have really only lost so many games in your career. Throughout your final three years, truly playing on in high school, you went 77 and eight. Then throughout college so far, you've yet to go into 500. Last year, they were 21 and nine. The first year, 18 and 14. Like, what's that winning mentality, and how have you made that up? Like, what does it mean to go into a game and just be able to come out with that many wins over your career? It is really impressive. It, and, like, the more, like, you play this sport at this level, it really shows when that it is that time when it's that. And, like, for example, like, K, when he, he came down here, he just, like, we knew, okay, like, he's been in big moments. He knows how to win. Me, like, I'm like, okay, that, like, yeah, I might have to learn it from a different, like, perspective at this level but at the end of the day I know what I have to do to win like I know for for what I need to do for my team to win and so that's really what it is because like when you lose so much you you kind of like you don't know which way to go like you don't know which way like okay do I need to go do this instead of do this it's like no like when you win a lot you know you just got to keep it simple 
right? And if you keep it simple, it might not work every time, but it's gonna like it's gonna favor you because you're like, okay, I, I did this and then I know this is something I can rely on that, that will put like help me put myself in that position to win. Now, this recruiting class that you were in is spectacular. I mean, obviously, you could look at the 2020 and kind of decide which one's better, but both them back to back classes, I think, good boy, and nailed them both on. Your class involved you and obviously Kate Keelan. You have Avery come out, who's looking like a pro player as well. Chris is also looking special. Like, how does this whole recruiting class come together? Like, did you know those guys really well? Did you just get to know them after you guys commit? Like, how did you guys form that recruiting class? Honestly, I didn't. I didn't know Avery. I knew of Chris because me and Keelan tried out to play for Houston Hoops mm-hmm. during the summer before my 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 last AAU summer. But I didn't. I really didn't know Avery. I didn't really know Chris that well. I just remember Chris. But I saw Chris at the MBPA camp when I went. Then we started talking and stuff like that. And I think at the time he told me he was going to Texas A&M. And mm-hmm. then when I found out he decommitted from there, I was like, oh, okay, bet. And then I found out we was at his top of the list to like of schools to go. So I was like, okay, bet. Like, yeah, that that would be lit. My dad talked to Avery's dad and Chris's dad a lot. So then my dad would like, you know, tell us like how they was feeling and stuff like that. But then I was surprised when we got Avery and Chris. But then Marcus, when he was here, we saw him on our unofficial visit. So then that's when we was like, okay, bet. Like we chopped it up with him. And he was like, yeah, you know, like this, this, this might be the school. I was like, yeah, bro, come, bro. You, me, and Key, and then Avery, and Chris was here, bro. Like it's up, bro. Like. It was, it was just it was just surprising when I got a person that was known to have one of the best hezies from Baller's life and, and having a strap shooter like Chris Harris. It was it was cool. Right, what is it about Coach Boyne? Like, how does he go out here and land you guys? Because, like I said, this group was elite, multiple top 100, top 150 guys. This 2020 class obviously has Cade Cunningham, Matt Alexander, Mon Grief, Ronda, Donovan. Like, how is he able to go out there and just win all these top guys over? It, the one thing about Coach Mike, he's not going to tell some of you in a year. He's not a salesman. And I think that's what, like, I didn't really realize that because my mom would always tell me, don't let some coach tell you something that, that you know you want to hear, like, if he's going to be real, like, meaning from the heart. And, like, I'm not going to say all the other coaches were, but, like, when it was Coach Mike, like when he came to my crib, he showed he showed me like okay, like bro, this he's not a person that's uh, here just for to get uh some talent. Like he wants to help me better my life as a as a man. Because at the end of the day, when I put the ball down, that's what I'm gonna be looked at. I'm gonna be a man in the real world, dealing with taxes, bills, stuff like that. And he's gonna help me put. And he's how much is better you as a person. He when he came to talk to me and Keelan, we talked about the basketball like probably for like 10 minutes. And then the rest was more just, look, I just want to better your life. I don't I don't. I said, I know. He said, I know if if I give you these tools, you will use it. But I'm going to show you how to use it to make your life better. because I know you're going to get better in basketball. And like I felt that from the heart. And I was like, you know, what? I can't I can't pass that up. Mm-hmm. And like, then. That's what that's what it was. Coach Mike is just a real coach. He's gonna keep it a, a buck with you, rather if you like it or not. He's gonna hear your point of the, how you feel, or the point of your point of view. Now, granted, you say your point of view to him. You better be ready to hear what he has to say back because you might not like it. But hey, he's gonna he's gonna show you. He's gonna honestly show you, man. Like it's the life. Like the moment you step on this, you say you committed to this team, and you step on campus, and you say I'm officially moving to OSU. He's going to prepare you for life. It's not just basketball. This is real deal life. And for two years, he has shown me that. He didn't put me through challenges, the obstacles I had to face. And it's just – and I'm just thankful for it because he, he has helped me overcome my, my challenges my sophomore year. And all he has done is just challenged me. And, like, hopefully I'm – hopefully as long as I'm here, this year, next year, God knows – he 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 just challenges me more and just embraces me more as a human being and as a person as as a man. 
lot. Now, the crazy thing about you guys, too, is this development plan because he clearly has done better than anyone could with Kate. He got him prime position to be the number one pick. I think Avery trained a pro. I want to talk about you. Your guys obviously on mock drafts right now. Matthew Alexander Moncrease on mock drafts. Like, this whole team is able to get guys to the NBA, at least prepare them for that. So what does the development plan like look like? Like, how does this Oklahoma State as a program get you guys ready for the NBA or start developing you guys to get potentially pro opportunities? Uh, one, for, like for me, Kilo and the, our big, biggest obstacle was our, our was our weight. Mm-hmm. And we got a great, a great strength coach, Coach Jake, man. No matter, like, no matter what's going on, he's going to challenge you, push you. You can go talk to him about anything. He's going to treat you like family, talk to you like family. Same thing with Coach Mike. If you got something to say to him, he's going to listen. But he's going to he's gonna keep the buck with you now. His way might be a little bit more aggressive because, you know, he's a strength coach and you know how wired they are in the head. But he, he's going to keep the buck with you. Uh, we got a great assistance. We got a great – we got a great trainer and everything like that. They, they help us keep our bodies right to play. The coaches, man, they, they – put us in the right positions. They tell us, hey, I really think if you work on this, this is going to better you, you, but not just also just your benefit for the team. And you do that, it's the sky's the limit. And that's that's what it is. And that's how they approach us. Well, it's heading to your freshman season out there, 18 and 14 as a whole. Obviously, you guys have a lot of freshmen on that team. You don't get that as much of an opportunity as you did this past year, but still five points per game, three rebounds, a block a game. Take us through last year a little bit and just what your freshman year was like. My freshman year was really like a learning experience. I, I view my freshman year like how I did in high school. Like I could have I could have done some things if I was like ready from the jump, if I had that dog mentality. And and granted, I had I still had Yor here, Cam, people that went through the fire the year before prior to like all the incidents, but I only had like seven, eight players. Mm-hmm. But like they helped me embrace a lot of challenges in my life. And, like, just being here, they they taught me some things. They they helped me bring that, like, that fight that I need to bring for my team that I had to bring this year. So then I, I saw things I needed to see. I went through things. I, but they was there to help me pick my head back up when things are tough and hard. And, yeah, like I said, my, my freshman was really like a learning experience, even though, like, my seeds, like my minutes was like up and down, up and down my freshman year. And we talked right after your freshman year, and that was a couple of weeks before they came with the original announcement saying that you guys aren't going to be playing the postseason this year. It's going to be a postseason ban. And that obviously was a hectic time because you guys didn't even know if you guys could play in the Big 12 tournament, let alone the NCAA tournament, up until you guys stepped on that court because you guys appealed and all that. But take us through how you guys reacted because you guys had Kate Cunningham. You guys clearly had a great team this year. And then you guys found out that news. How would you handle that? And just how do you guys as a team keep trying to stay focused on the season with not knowing if you could play in the tournament or not? Uh, how I view the situation, honestly, because I remember the day when that happened, Coach Mike called me. He asked me, like, hey, man, what are you doing? Every time I said, man, I'm just at the crib chilling. Mm-hmm. He said, you all right? I said, yeah, man, you know, I'm happy, man. Just, just being me, being Caleb. He said, all right, I just wanted to tell you before, like, it went on public that – there's going to be a postseason ban, and there's a chance we might not play in the tournament. Mm-hmm. And if you need anything, if you need to talk about something, just let me know. But all that, and I told I told Coach Mike, man, I said, man, I don't care if I play in the tournament or not, bro. I'm like, I'm I'm here. I'm staying here. <laughs> that called me, like, a couple of, like, an hour later, an hour or two later. He said, man, so what's the plan? What you, what you think? I said, I don't know what everybody else is doing, but he, he got his – he got his post player – for the for the next year, uh, I view the situation like it would have sucked if we didn't play. But I was like, man, it, me playing the tournament is a great experience, great exposure. But I'm like, to me, it's not that big of a deal. Like, I get it; it's everybody's dream to win the national championship. But like, I was like, man, it's just it's one year. When I looked into it, they said it's just a one year ban. So I'm like, I got my junior and senior year to do that. I know it's hard to do that, but. Hey man, I'm. I viewed it more as a situation like, okay, I'm gonna just be, I'm gonna be loyal to the guy that was loyal to me when I, I didn't have anything in mind. Like when I was a person that weighed 170 back in high school, and that's how I just beat the situation. 
and then talked to my brother. My brother was like, you yeah, know, he was on board and stuff like that. The only thing I was, I was waiting. I was trying to see what what my the freshmen were doing. And I saw Rondell was staying. I saw Emma was staying. I saw Kay Donovan. I said, okay, that bro, I got we got our team. I said, so and then we just go out there and we just play. Because I view the situation, I said, most people can honestly view this and not this, well, but the season's pointless now. But, like, as us, we play like, no, nah, the season ain't pointless. He told us, when he told us we appealed it, we was like, okay, bro, we just got to go balls to the wall, like, bump it. Whoever, whoever they say play, we're going to go play. We're going we're gonna to go beat them or try to compete with them, win the game. And then that's it. And that's how I viewed it. Now, from the time that you guys found out it became public and obviously each guy slowly made the decision and came out publicly saying, okay, I'm staying at Oklahoma State. But surprisingly, obviously, almost the entire team, not everyone, did stay, which was not, not – I don't think a lot of teams actually would do that. But you guys ended up coming together. Did you Were you aware of who's all coming back? Like, did you talk to Kate? Did you talk to Ron Dad? Did you talk to all the other guys on the team to see if they wanted to come back or not? Or was each guy kind of a surprise to you? Uh, I talked to everybody. Everybody was mm-hmm. like – at first, everybody was like, I don't even know what to do. I got to look into it more. I was like, and it was understandable. But then, mm-hmm. like, the more, like, we were looking into it, the more, like, it was on the news and the news was talking about it and everything like that. It was like, it was like oh, yeah, like, that's fine. Hey, look, we're just going to gonna thug it out. Mm-hmm. And then, ask, we were, the main person that everybody was worried about was Kay because at the time, Kay, like, deleted all his, like, OSU stuff and like that. And mm-hmm. it was, like, like crazy. Because nobody really talked to him. I didn't really talk to him. I found out Kay was coming back the same way everybody else did when he posted that video on his IG. And then I was like, okay, bet my guy's coming back. I get to play with Kay Cunningham. So I could see what, the, what everybody was talking about him for. And mm-hmm. one year he was here, man, he did his thing. Well, let's go through that because you guys go through the entire course of the season. Like I said, you guys still didn't know if you guys would play or not. Obviously, it literally does come right up until the very end when you get step on that court. Obviously, they didn't decide to make a ruling yet, so you guys are able to go play in that. But what was your guys' thoughts on that? Because you guys were waiting. Clearly, you guys were an obvious NCAA tournament team. You guys were going to go no matter what happened in the Big 12 tournament. So what was your guys' thoughts? Like, how are you guys waiting? What were you guys talking about? Like, just, did that even distract you at the course of the year? Like, how do you guys handle knowing if you guys could or could not play up until the very end there? At first it was, but then, like, Coach Mike was like, Coach Mike told us, he said, y'all just worry about – playing basketball, me and the coaches were worried about all that, all that stuff. So then we, we just started hooping. We took one game at a time. We played our hearts out. And we were we were blessed to see the tournament and stuff like that. Now, as you said, obviously the big thing this year was with Kid Cunningham. He's going to be most likely number one pick, if not top three, top five lock. But playing That's, alongside him, like, what, how special was that? Uh... I just want to say he has to be number one pick. If you pass him up as number one pick, man, I don't. You're you're going to see a, uh, a different side. I'm not saying he expects to be the number one pick. Mm-hmm. As a teammate, as a person that I, that practice practice with him and against him every day, that dude deserves to be the number one pick in my opinion. But and like that's not me. Like you know, like trying to like do that. It's just this is how that's how I feel. But being on the team with K, man, having him as my point guard, it was it was a great. He helped me get better as a as a player. And, um, having his brother here helped a lot too. But like, just like a person that could play the one through five, one through four, one through five at a collegiate level, but one through and like and like he knew he has post moves. He has the size. He told me some tricks. I told him. He he helped me. He helped me like push myself even more. So then, like when he did that, I was it was a great feeling, man. Playing with K was 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 like a great time. First thing I have him as the number one overall prospect. I think the only way he wouldn't go is if if it's some team gets up that already has a point guard locked in of the future. Then you might have yeah. to go, maybe you're signing like Evan Mobley or something. That's your need. But if we're just talking about all the other guards, I, like I said, I have him number one. But obviously in the mix, you have guys like Jalen Green, Jalen Suggs, other great prospects. But what separates K Cunningham? Like you got to see him in a locker room as a leader. But what separates K? Why is he better than any other guard out there? Oh, just how versatile that guy is. Like I'm not saying not saying much from from Jalen Slugs or Green or any other player point guard or guard in the draft. But like 
the everything about Kate is just so efficient that I've seen. Yeah. Like I said this, I said Kate is one person I can know that can go get a slight fifteen on an ugly night. Like mm-hmm. trust me, like that first round against Liberty when we played them, it was like because I know Kate. To me, I said, bro, that was like a ugly like fifteen. I didn't even like I didn't realize he had fifteen until like the game ended. I was like, dang, you had that much. And he was like, yeah, bro, that that was ugly. I'm like, what? And then I see him go drop a forty ball <laughs> against OU, and then. I didn't see him hit game winners. I didn't see him turn up and get Kansas. So I, and I was like, but all that is just efficient. That's just how he – that's just how he is. That's just how he plays the game. And, like, there's never been a night, a night where I just feel like, oh, like, Kate is just off. Like, no, like, Kate's going to give you his efficient, probably like a good 15 with seven and, like, six, five, something like that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you, you just can't be how efficient he is. Because it just takes him a little, it takes takes him a little bit. He's just see once goes in, and then he gets into the group. He gets to the spot he wants, and then and it's just over. Now there's something that I think everyone that watched you guys play ever noticed that he was obviously still a great play in the first half, even for the first few minutes, second half. But all of a sudden, just about any game that, except maybe blowouts, that may be a little bit different. But like any game that was within ten point margin. All of a sudden, around like the 15 or so minute mark on, it's something to switch. And he started going out there and would drop 15, 20, 25 points all of a sudden in the final few minutes of a game. Like, was that on purpose? Like, did you guys kind of just try making it be more of a team effort the whole way through and then have him take over later on? Was that just him personally just decided to do that? Like, what led to those type of games? We just, we just hooped, honestly. Like, we, we realized, like, you know, Kay's going to, you know, we knew Kay was going to get his shots and stuff like that. None of us really tripped. But like we we everybody has teams did that part. Like K did his part being like the facilitator stuff like that. I did my part towards the end of being like the big that they needed me to be. And May did his part the the whole season. And just all that stuff. Keelan did his part. Eyes, Avery. That's just what it was. I just think everybody just knew that role and they embraced it. And well when we embraced our roles, it was just it, it made it was just confusing because most people was like, okay, so what is like is Kate just wait now or is everybody else going crazy? And it was just that's what it was. Now something switched for you too, because you obviously started a lot of the games, 24 out of 30, came off the bench for a few of those games, and you obviously were playing a solid role. But then all of a sudden about mid-season, something clicked for you, you just flipped the switch too, and you became one of the best shot blockers in the entire country. You end up leading the big 12 in blocks. You became a guy scoring double digits nearly every single night out there, getting double doubles. Like all of a sudden, you just became one of the better bigs in the conference in the entire country. So, what switched all of a sudden for you? Like, what led to that breakout for you? Uh, I had a meeting with Coach Mike, and me and him talked. I told him how I felt. He told me how I felt. He challenged me about something. So then I embraced it. And then when I did that, I took a look in my mirror. I said, Do "You, it's either this or this." And I said, "You know what?" I'm gonna go do this and whoever likes it, they like it, if they don't, they don't. But I'm gonna just go out here and be the big coach Mike needs me to be. And, and that's what it was. Honestly, I had I just want to become the big that coach Mike needed me to. But like honestly, it was the he knows what meeting I'm talking about, and my dad does if they if they both see this, but like yeah, that that me after that meeting, everything changed, and then I started being 100 percent with myself and then when i did that then that's when everything went right and there's something about you too you still hey, added on a lot of muscle but you're still not the most strongest guy out there compared to some guys you're going up against but like i said you go out there and you're scoring more than the, the most of the big men you played against you're going up against a guy dan mccormick who i'm not sure what exactly he weighs but it's a lot more than you a lot of different guys have a lot more weight than you how have you learned to body around with them, still muscle around with them and defend them at a high clip, score them at a high clip? Like, how have you learned to utilize your size against them? Uh, my conditioning and my footwork. Mm-hmm. That, but uh, they, they stress about me so much. I'm not, like you said, and everybody knows I'm not the biggest post player. I still, I'm still below the weight to be a post player. Well, but I love playing the five. So, I go out there and I thug it out. But, yeah, I, they always tell me, use your feet. You're quicker than them. My dad always tells me, okay, if I got to play against a 6'11", 250, 260, okay, bet. 
he, he could he probably will like like outweigh me, outfight me. But can he run like me? Can can he move like me? Can can he like can he go guard this ball screen when I'm running full speed to go set the screen? And by the time he does that, guard both of us. It's like it's like I just at some point I had to make it easier for myself because at one point I made it complicated. But honestly, that's that's what it is. I just have to use my feet. And then at the end of the day, I gotta remember I'm I'm still I'm still a shot blocker. I might not be one of the like, one of the ones like oh like intimidated like oh they're going to paint they gotta do the ball. I know like I know some people challenge me, but I, I just got to I had to remind people like, okay cool like I could still block shots and then and then towards the end of the year that's what I did. So who's the, your favorite matchup in the Big 12 so far, or even the entire country? But who's that one center that you've loved playing against the most so far in your career? It was Jericho Sims. Mm -hmm. It was Jericho Sims because my freshman year, it was like my freshman year, I, like when I played him, I had my first big game against him. Then, like, then he, I think he got hurt or he had a big game. My first, no, he got hurt. Mm -hmm. I think this year, they, they did. They they got us at the at their place, and then they came here. I had that big game, and then the last game of the year, <laughs> Big Twelve in the championship. He he won that one. Jericho Sims was that one. Um, uh, even though this was a challenging one, I will say McCor that David McCormick is one because he's labeled as one of the, like he's labeled even now like the most improved player in the Big Twelve. I think mm -hmm. he think it was so like. That that that's a good one, and then my third one will obviously be probably either Kevin Samuels or um, Derek Colbert. Without a doubt. Well, you guys obviously got the ultimate goal to go to the NCAA tournament, and it was much different than typical. You guys had to go through the whole bubble process, stuck in your room for a majority of the time. Went out there, you guys advanced a couple of rounds. Just take us through life in the bubble, though. Stressful, man. Stressful. It. It. I, I love being playing in, in the tournament. I think I love that feeling. It was it was great, like just being there, experience something that you know when you fall in love with basketball, you watch every year at high school, middle school. You dream about moments like this when you like on the street or in a parking lot, uh, shooting on that hoop or in the gym. Mm -hmm. and part of that moment, it was it was a great feeling. Losing that, losing hurt that that like losing that tournament hurts a lot more than losing like like a big game against probably like OU or Kansas. But like that that hurt. That hurt when we lost, but like the life in the boat, man, it was like it was struggling like because all you did was like you just chilled in your room, you court and you lift weight lifted. That was it. Like you couldn't go outside, chilled in your room majority of the day. You can only stand on that or that. You couldn't travel nowhere without your team. So it was just stuff like that. We had COVID testing every day and that was I hated that. <laughs> I hated the COVID testing every day. Absolutely. Well, heading into the upcoming season now, and as we just talked about, you had a huge breakout last season. You're one of my guys that have one of the even bigger breakouts to the national scene this year now. But what's the next step for Caleb Boone? Like, what can you bring to the table, and what will you bring to the table this upcoming season? I want to show that I had, like, I want people to say I am either one or the best big in the Big 12 next year. And that's my goal. And that's that's what I want to – me personally, that's what I want to do and that's what I want to work towards and stuff like that. Obviously, my dream is to play in the NBA. But, like, in the collegiate level, I just want – I want to, like, gain that respect saying, you know, like, Caleb Boone is either one of the best bigs or the, the best big in the Big 12. And I know that says a lot because we got – Cormac Seal, Samuel, we got people coming in and stuff like that. But that means I'm going to have to go work my tail off and just do everything I need to do so I'll, I can – people can say that. Now, as I mentioned, you are starting to appear in some mock drafts. I'm not sure if you've seen that or not, but they're probably going to start having that pressure. Guys, I'm going to start talking to you about that because you fit that perfect stretch five, modern day center kind of role. How do you balance that, though? Because you obviously want to prioritize working on the court with Oklahoma State. But now you're starting those rumors as people talking about NBA stuff around you and just kind of in the background, your back of your head. So how do you balance that? And how do you stay focused on college and still while balancing the NBA dream? Honestly, don't even like think about it. <laughs> I, I, I didn't even know I was on the mock drafts until my until my dad and my high school coach told me about it. 
And I was just like, oh, that's that's exciting. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, like people at, like ask about you, talk about you, but I'm like, I didn't mind it. But then my dad always tells me now, he said, dress for the job you want, not the job you have. So mm-hmm. I got to go out here and carry myself and like show like I want I want to achieve more than in my life. And that's what I got to go do. I just, they if they told me, okay, bet, but I got to go put in the work because it's pointless to tell me something when I don't put in the work for it. So. Now you guys obviously are losing a huge piece in K. We know everything he brought to you guys. So. A lot of points and shots are going to become available. Someone else is going to step up facilitating wise. Everyone's going to kind of have to fill those roles and still play at a high level. Like I think you guys can do this year. So take us through who's going to fill those shoes. Obviously, we talk about yourself, but who else would you say besides yourself would be the biggest breakout candidate on Oklahoma State this year? Everybody, <laughs> Every breakout man. We got we got transfers coming in. We got we got freshmen coming in, man. Everybody's gonna have a big out. It's like this year's team is not gonna be one guy, one star, because everybody labeled with the star and the team was K. And that's fun. But this year they don't have to worry about Avery, Ice, 1K, Bryce Thompson, me, Keelan, Tyreek, Byron. Like it, anybody can be the leading scorer for this year's team. So I, I just think that's what it is. You really can't just single out one guy. It's like, He's the head of the snake. No, like, it's it's a team. I think Avery's one of those guys that did show a lot of stuff more towards the end of the year as an elite scorer, too. But how special is Avery Anderson? Like, what will he be bringing to the team next year? Avery's going to bring that dog mentality. He's going to bring that that drive, that energy that we need. And he's going to bring – he's going – he's just going to turn everybody up. He's going to – he's just going to be – Avery's going to be Avery, man. That, that – <laughs> Y'all saw, I see that every day in practice. I see the hard work in. I see the extra shots. I see that's what I see. And it pays off on when the lights are on, the fans are in the in the, in the bleachers and the seats, cameras are on. So that's what that's what it is. Avery's going to bring be Avery every day. As you said, there's a couple of different transfers coming in. One of them is also a guy coming back home to play. You guys have a good relationship, too. I know you guys played with him on the AAU circuit before. That's Bryce Thompson, also former five-star coming from KU. How special is Bryce? Oh, Bryce is special, man. That's the guy that uh, that can shoot it at a very high level, can get to his spots. The one thing I will say about him is when he wants to get to a spot to shoot the ball, he will get there and he will he will shoot over over somebody. He will make it. He got very – he's very athletic now. He's more athletic than I than I thought he was. I seen him. I hooped with him at the ranch, and he yeah, he showed me a little some bounce. So I was like, okay, bet, man, my guy got bouncy. But yeah, no, Bryce is a really good player, man. Unselfish player, hard worker, and I can't wait to play with him, man. I played with him on PWP for two years, man. It was it was it was it was it was it was, it was, it was fun. Man, I played with him in college, man. That's gonna be even funner. Uh, now we don't got to, we don't got to beat him. I could just play with him, play on the same team as. Him. Absolutely. Well, something I was like wrapping discussing is building a legacy for yourself, and I know all guys want to remember for something. But when that day does come, when you step away from this game of basketball, what do you want to remember for for to achieve both on and off the court? I want to be remembered for my, just how like my personality, man. Like how like everybody, like you could go hang out with Caleb. And, you're just gonna love his personality, the way that he just is, the way that he just—he's happy. He—he's joke—he's joking, he's joking man. He just—just just, I just want my people to remember me, just who I am as a person, not about a, about a basketball, just about a person. I'm gonna leave my legacy. I'm gonna leave a mark. People to say something about me on basketball. One day, I would, I know that for sure. So I'm going to work hard enough to do it, but I want people to realize, like, I want to leave legacy just based on who I am. Absolutely, man. Well, something else I know you are is that you're also a believer. It's going to take us through your faith a little bit. How has God helped get you to the point out today? Oh, man, God didn't. God has literally just <laughs> shown me all the, all the things that can help my career, like break my career and everything like that. And he didn't let me t- test waters. He didn't put me in positions where I almost lost some things in my life. 
but he he always still like he's always been there for me. He has always guided me, and he always like kept my kept me level headed. And he always like no matter what, if I'm in a funk, he, he always tells me it's just it's just temporary, and he showed me that. So that's that's why anytime I go through something, I'll just view it as a test in life. Like this is a, this always isn't permanent because I know God's gonna put me in a position. He's gonna show me the obstacle. He's gonna show me the message. Be like if you do this, this can change this. But if you don't do it, you just probably want to just stay where you're at. And I always just think of it like that, no matter what, good times and bad times. What would you say is the biggest moment you've seen God show up in your life? It was when I went, when I had that meeting with Coach Mike and my, and I had went through, like, my personal issues. And then, obviously, like, in high school, when I went through a lot of stuff with my sister. He didn't show me, like, okay, like, just work, work like that. This is just a test, but like, don't worry. I'm gonna help you be in the positions to change your life. Here's why I'm here, Oklahoma State. He to help. He has helped me better myself. And I'm thankful that uh, he has blessed me with the talent and the, the the mindset to work hard and stuff like that, so I can become in this, be, like, be in this position. But I know he's gonna help me and bless me with more opportunities in life to to gain more and see more in my life. Absolutely, man. Well, my final thing for you, give Oklahoma State fans your three biggest goals you have set for your final years out there at Oklahoma State. Win the national championship, of course. Win the big book, chip them. And, mm, oh, yeah, win the regular season championship. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Well, definitely appreciate you taking that come on today. I look forward to what I got next for you, man. I appreciate it, my guy. Thank you. Of course, those will come on, man. God bless. God bless you, too, man.